This is the third video in my three video series about making and then now quilting Table Runner. I'm Pat Sloan, I'm so glad you're here. If you did not catch up yet with the other videos, here is what the Table Runner looks like that we've been sewing. It is four, let me get the last one, four giant blocks done with my Bonnie Lane fabric. And I wanna show you now how I quilted it. I'm going to talk about the stitch. I will show you the mechanics of the stitch and then I will come over here to the jubilant and we'll sew on a single block that I have and I can show you how that works. So this, I had all, you know, the top done, basted it, which I will link in my website. The website is right under this video. So wherever you're watching it, I'm putting a link to my website article. And that means if you're on YouTube, it would be under the video. If you're on Facebook, it's probably above the video. But if you're on an app on your phone, look around. The text is there often after the advertisements. So just take, you know, take your time, you'll find the link. But it's over at my regular blog, so it's not that hard to find. Uh, you can just go to patsalone.com and from there go to the blog if, you, if you've never been there. So there I will have some up close pictures and I will also have some other information about this. But now let's get to it. Let's look at the wave. This is a wave stitch. At least that's what I call it. And there are a lot of machines that have it. So you might, uh, you might have a machine that's, you know, got a wave stitch. If you're on a baby lock, a lot of them do. The Jubilant does, all the, the Solaris, the Destiny, the Crescendo, they all have a wave stitch. So here it is. And it's just this nice, like serpentine, but I just call it a wave. And what I like about it is very soft and drapeable. So rather than like a hard straight stitch, I feel like this just keeps everything really, really soft and drapeable. And I like that about it. Plus it's super simple. Everybody can finish their quilts with this and we're gonna use our walking foot and there's no free motion quilting. Now the plan I did was, you can see, I'll pull it down to one block here. The blocks are you know, sewn four together and all the seams, there's a seam out here because I put a little uh, two inch border on it. Then there's the seam for this unit, for this unit out here, there's another seam for the other little, the other little border. What I did was I started at the end and then just sewed on the seam, the serpentine, sewed on the other seam, the outer two seams. And then I took it and split it in the middle for each of those. So I went down the middle, which in part of this one has a block. And over here down the middle, you're coming through the center one, right? And over here, same again, along this block. Then after that, you can see it here. See this and this? I then split it two more. So I did one and then the other, just in thirds. So I made this in thirds in between each. This only took maybe an hour to quilt. It's not very long, so it's super nice. I am going to move this and show you the stitching over here. Show you the stitch. We want to get a little bit closer so that uh, we can see the whole thing. Hopefully you can see it. There we go, now it's coming in. All right, up at the top here. I started there, you can see the straight stitch. So I started straight stitch, then I changed it to the serpentine. And this is right off the jubilant. So it's a lot tighter than what I want, meaning that it is short, the, the, the wave is short, and they're close together. So what I did here, as you can see, it's a little bit more open, is I changed uh, the zigzag number to be bigger so that it went further out. It went further out each time. And now if we pull it down, you're going to see that it's also now a lot longer. See, it's a lot longer. Let me pull back just a little bit so you can see more of it. So you can see how it went short and tight, a little bit wider, and then now I took it a little bit longer. And that's the straight stitch number on your machine. So let's look at the Jubilant. And it is over here. So let me just pull it up because we're already close in. So here's the Baby Lock Jubilant. And this is a wheel that takes you to each um, pattern, you know, each stitch pattern. And what I'm looking at is number 36, and there's the wave. You can see what it is. So I wanna go back to 36, and it would have uh, been whatever the default was. Let me just turn it off and on real quick. Let's go back to the default, because I was already playing with it. All right, so we're gonna to go to 36, 
we'll put a little past. There's where 36. Okay, so it's at 1.5 as a default. And what I want to do is take those numbers. I want to take the one bigger, and I want to take. Whoops. Whoops. I hit the wrong thing, didn't I? I hit the needle. Oh, we don't want to do that. Here, take this number bigger up to two and a half, and we'll take this up to six and a half. And let me just run it through here. I've got the walking foot on. It's always fun to do this sideways. Okay, I've got the walking foot on, and let's shift over a little bit. This is set up with the, uh, so I just press it, and it's going to stitch. So it's going now nice and wide. And the only way you're going to see what it is is when I take it out. So I will stop it and pull up, take the needle up and pull it out so that we can uh, see it up close here, what I just did. So this stitch that I just sewed is a little wide. So it's a little longer and a little wider than I had before. Whoops, sorry, there we go. A little longer and a little wider than I had before. I should have should, uh, done it down there. So I want to change the number back to a six and I'm gonna change the other one back to like a two. All right, now we'll go over back up to the bed of the machine and let's pull out a little bit and I will take this block that I did. So I have one block from the quilt and this is uh, just basted. So here we go. So let me just talk to you for one second. So what I have is the one block basted and I will just run it through on the seam. So I will do the first seam. I'll just come from the top and go straight down, straight down the seam. And if there were four blocks, I would just keep going. You know, I would just sew the whole four blocks, but we just have the one block. So I am going to put this in here, put the presser foot down, and then let's go ahead and come back into the machine so that you can see it. It's going to be really, really simple and what's <clears throat> what's nice is I'm sewing without a uh, presser foot so using the stop start button on the jubilant there we go so what I will do is I have it under here and I will just be right on the seam and because it's doing this wave I'm not trying to get it angled any particular way it's super forgiving which is why I think it's perfect for you to start anything that you're doing that you've never done before. This is the greatest stitch to start with. So I will just be guiding it along here and going the whole way down. And when I get to the end, I will just stop and go back up to the top and come back and come down the next, the next seam over. And so that's gonna be the whole thing I do, just start at the top and come back down. And I will stop it here. <clears throat> so I can just show you what we look like. Put the needle up, pull it out. So I really want you to just, I want you to see what's going on. So on, on here, you can see the wave now. Stitch that just went, you know, over. It can go more on one side or the other. It doesn't really matter. It's just going along a wave like that. So if I were doing through the middle, I would start here and then I will be coming right down the middle and then down through the middle of the square here and then all the way through the rest of the block. And that is the plan that I used for my, uh, for my table runner. And what I like is that it is so simple. And if you have a machine that you can sew uh, hands-free like this where you're just, I'll put it over, so when you're just pushing a button that allows you to uh, sort of, not, you don't have to focus so much. Like if you're a free motion quilting, this, you would be having to concentrate a lot. You would be like really focused on your stitch length and all those other things if you're not using some sort of other attachment. You're just, you know, doing it the, you know, real freehand way. When you're doing this with the walking foot and particularly uh, something very forgiving like this where you're just sort of doing straight rows, you don't have to concentrate that hard and you don't have to be that focused on keeping on the line and of course you don't have to do anything for the stitch length the machine is doing all that the walking foot is 
this attachment. It's a different kind of foot. And what it does is there's a little arm that goes over the bar. So as the foot goes up and down, there's a part of, of it that will go with the arm and it does a dual, it's called dual feed. So it's coming like this for the top and the bottom of the fabric and feeding it through versus just the bottom feeding. And sometimes the top would get like, like pushing on it if it's thick like this because it has batting in it. So that's why the dual feed is nice or the, you know, the walking foot. Uh, on my Solaris, the walking foot is actually electronic. It's plugged into the computer part and it's much bigger and has like special controls and it has functionality for thickness. It does just automatically for thickness of the batting and package that's under it sewing, you know, that whatever sandwich you're working with. So it's a much more complex um, foot than this basic one which is, works super nice. And I just love that the Jubilant has this. And I will give you a link at my website and down below here at YouTube and Facebook in the, the text area to the Jubilant. So this is one that you can order online. And when you do that, it does support our small family business. So it's really nice if you are intending to buy one. It's really nice if you use our links, we appreciate it. Uh, and I'm showing you where the best place that I know of to get it, so that's, that's always good. I always look for, for ways that we can um, make our dollars stretch, right? <laughs> so this is the project. I did the binding and I have some close-ups at the website. I did the binding with a straight stitch versus a blanket stitch because I used the stripe. And I just think that with a stripe, it looks a lot nicer to have the straight stitch on there. And I, you know, you can use the digital, you know, you can use the walking foot to do that too. It all works really nicely. So this is the end of this little series and we will be sewing two other projects uh, this, this fall with my Bonnie Lane. We have Glow, which will be coming up. I have to do the post on that. So this is the quilt for Glow. Let me hold up part of it. Whee! There's half of it. So it's got a star in the middle and this is a lap quilt. So there's, there's one of the blocks. So that is uh, getting ready, to, you know, getting these blocks cut and then sewing them every week for a few weeks. And then after that in uh, early November, we're going to do the uh, Drive Down Bonnie Lane which has some piecework and some applique. So if you've never done applique and you've wanted to, this is the project. Let me just show you one of the houses because they're so cute. The houses are so cute and they're big. Look at this. La -da 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 -da. So that's the, uh, there are, there is quite a bit of applique too. Like the, the car is applique, the, the trees, the light post and the, uh, the little dresses on the clothesline. But all the stars are patchwork. Most of the houses are patchwork. So it is super fun. And I hope you join me. And it'd be great if you right now would go and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're watching it on Facebook or at my website, if you just pop on over and subscribe, that will be let you know when there are new videos. Click the bell after you subscribe. It'll be right down there, uh, right next to where you hit the word subscribe. After you do that, the bell shows up. Then you click that so you get the notification. So I'm Pat Sloan. I'm so thrilled to have you sewing with me. I just think it is the best thing ever to have a wonderful group of people who enjoy the same thing and can help each other. Thank you for being in my community. If you're in my Facebook group, it is a wonderful place. It's called Along with Pat Sloan. So I love you. I will see you online.